So I've been playing Onechan Bara Z2 Chaos. You know, for some weird fucking reason, I really tend to gravitate towards flawed but charming kind of games. Some of my favorite developers include the likes of Grasshopper Entertainment, Axis Games and Spike Chunsoft. I don't know if it's because of the little engine that could appeal, or just because most of these games tend to look like upscale PS2 titles. But so far, most of the games made by these developers really seem to tickle my privates. So, when I heard about some weird, obscure, low-budget Japanese series about half-naked chicks fighting zombies while elegantly clipping through walls, I got pretty excited. Also, these screenshots may or may not have had something to do with that as well. Surely, this has to be the exclusive all PS4 owners have been waiting for. Right? The story of this game is really fucking stupid. And it follows the tale of Aya, Kagura, Saki and Saya, who are vampires but also zombie slayers because destiny or some bullshit like that. Pictures happen, text flashes by, and after some crotch shots and jiggle physics, some chick appears who breaks open the ground and then a zombie outbreak happens, even though we totally stopped them in the last game, you guys. Now, I know, I know, this game builds upon the rich lore from all of the other Onechan Bara games, of which I believe only two to have been released outside of Japan, but it is a little bit hard to follow simply because it dumps all of its backstory onto you with walls of text NES style. Luckily, it doesn't really matter as the story is just an excuse to make boobs, blood and zombies happen. And as such an excuse, it works relatively well, as the crux of it basically boils down to zombies are everywhere, so we must travel the world to stop them. What's there though in terms of cutscenes is actually kind of okay and the English dub isn't half bad either. I mean, there aren't any deep emotional revelations going on or anything, so don't expect any Oscar worthy performances. But for a game about vampire knockers and zombie slaying, it's rather entertaining in the dumbest way possible. And <laughs> it's not like it's a very story heavy game anyways. It's there, sure, and perhaps worthy of a few giggles, but the star of this game are definitely the tits. Did, did I say tits? Oh. Well, <clears throat> well, I meant gameplay. Set gameplay comes in the form of a fairly traditional hack and slasher in the vein of Bayonetta or Devil May Cry, only nowhere near as difficult. Though the fact that it even comes close is fairly impressive in and of itself, and I honestly didn't expect the game to be decent, let alone good. Thing is, is that this game is actually pretty fucking deep, as there's a shit ton of shit going on in terms of different combat styles, combos and mechanics. First of all, is the fact that all four of these playable characters have their own massive move list, and each of these characters can carry two weapons that both fight very differently, along with a throwable sub-weapon. And of course, you can expand upon this shit by buying new combos, weapons, and also rings which give you additional perks like regenerating health or an increase in defense. And all of these characters can be tagged in during battle at any given time. Then, there's also the fact that the game has different sets of combos, just for aerial combat, during dashes or while dodging, and even tag combos where tagging in one of the other girls mid combo will make for some hype as shit. And all characters have their own respective fields of expertise as well, as one will be better at dealing with large groups or dealing heavy damage, that sort of thing. It's quite insane, and surprising how well thought out this shit actually is. The only downside is, is 
that it's a little bit wonky kinesthetically. I mean, it's rather floaty compared to Bayo or DMC and the game is also a visual fucking clusterfuck. And while it is very satisfying to mash buttons and watch zombies explode and blood flying everywhere, it doesn't really get you to the meat and potatoes. And the game does a very, very lackluster job of explaining itself properly. Much like Devil May Cry, it takes a while to learn the ins and outs of the combat's mechanics. Only DMC is designed in a way where the game teaches and guides you through it bit by bit. And this game doesn't really do that. Not at all, even. Because of the game's cluster fuckery, it's very hard to notice the enemy's attack patterns and dodge or react accordingly. Most of the times when I got hit, I got hit by something I couldn't even see. It's kind of like, imagine Dark Souls, but then with a Dynasty Warrior's enemy count. That shit just done work. Now, the game isn't quite that bad, but it does get close in a few instances. And especially early on, I had a very hard time figuring out what the fuck was actually happening. Not just because of the sheer amounts of zombies on screen at once, but also because this has to be the ugliest UI I have ever seen. And I say that without mentioning the sheer fucking abomination that is this game's start menu. It's really quite fucking awful. And while I will say that it kinda adds to the game's... uh... charm, it doesn't necessarily encourage the player to actually dig deep into the combat and play as varied as they potentially could. I mean, most enemy types are either bullet sponges or cannon fodder. And having well over a dozen on screen at once, paired with the lack of explanation and the horrible UI, makes for a very unwelcoming and overall confusing experience. But after a couple of hours of trying different things and reading through the hints you get during the loading screens, I finally knew what I was doing, and had a fuckload of fun as a result. Like, <laughs> It's also far from the hardest character action game as well, so at least it leaves some room for the player to dick around and figure shit out on their own. Though it is quite easy to fall into a button masher state of mind, especially with how daunting it could be, to have the game dump all of these mechanics on you with little to no explanation whatsoever. Still though, despite this clearly not being a platinum game, I really shouldn't understate how much it actually offers in the way of different mechanics. And one of these forces you to switch characters frequently and play around with different weapons, as you need to refresh your weapons once they get too bloody. I mean, you can't possibly fight with jibs clogging up your chainsaw and pus blunting your sword, now can you? So, in a move that's totally not ripping off Devil May Cry, each and every level has one or two statues, at which you're able to refresh said weapons and also buy new ones and expand your combo list. And holy fucking fuck, this combo list is flipping massive. It's quite insane, honestly, and as I said before, it really does seem like they put in a surprising amount of effort. Anyway, you purchase everything with the same currency, being these yellow orbs that drop when you kill enemies. And while the game isn't necessarily difficult by any means, you do kind of have to spend these wisely. It is most certainly possible to grind in some areas, but I wouldn't really recommend it as it kind of dulls the action a little. And if there is any challenge here, I'd definitely say that it's trying to buy and use as few healing items as possible and focus on new weapons and combos instead. <coughs> <coughs> my voice. Though you do need to self-impose a challenge, which is kinda shitty. And what's also kinda shitty is the fact that while the combo list is fucking grand and great, and having four different characters all with different fighting styles is bloody amazing, the game isn't really designed around this. At all. To lay it out nice and simple, there are essentially two tactics that more or less break the game. First off, is that keeping enemies airborne is very easy to do, as all you have to do is jump and they'll float up with you. And once they're there, they can attack you because they're too busy ragdolling in midair. And second, uh, 
off, there's this thing that dodging can literally done at any given time. And thus, you can spam it and pretty much remain invincible. This, paired with the insane amount of brain dead, bullet sponge, mechanon fodder enemies, makes it so that the battle system isn't properly utilized in any way. It's like they looked at Bayonetta and said, yeah, we could do that, and then got surprisingly close, but also still failed to really grasp what makes Bayo a great fucking game. So because of the before mentioned clusterfuckery and the totally abusable mechanics, you end up being really fucking OP, even while you sometimes don't even know what the fuck you're actually doing, nor do you ever need to use the rather deep combo system as none of the enemies do anything more than just standing there and taking it. But still, despite it kinda missing the point, I did have a rather surprising amount of fun with it. And I will say that the game is actually quite good as well. It's just that it looks like a bad game. And that's enough to put off a lot of people, which is totally understandable. I mean, it's certainly the type of game that made me want to take a shower after playing. Not because of all the big stonking tits, but mostly just because of the only fucking shit this has got to be the ugliest color scheme I have ever seen. But I'd still recommend it to people that like hack and slashers. It kinda sits in the middle between Bayonetta and Lollipop Chainsaw, both from a stylistic standpoint and also from a gameplay standpoint. So I figure that it would at least appeal to people that like either or both to varying degrees. There might not really be any form of tactical thinking here, which sucks dick considering the potential the mechanics have, but I'm also not too sure how much I really care to be honest. I mean, it spawned from the Simple series, which also brought you classics such as Earth Defense Force and Demolition Girl. And much like EDF, it's jank as fuck and flawed in almost every single way, but also, fuck you, you love it, bitch.